Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here with the 43rd week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand played, again, in the same $10,000 buy-in event online from last week. Uh, you see we're a little bit deeper in the tournament now. The blinds are 200-400, so the stacks are getting relatively short. But even then, most players still have around between 50 and 100 big blinds. It folds around to me, and I make it 1,200 with Jack-7 suited. And I actually do not like this raise size. And the reason I dislike it is because the big blind is relatively short. If the big blind had more chips, like you know 20,000, I think 1,200 would be fine. But as we get shorter and shorter, you are going to want to make your raises smaller. That way, whenever your opponent does play back at you, you can get away from your hand. Right here, though, it folds around to him, and he makes it 3,000, which is kind of weird because... With a stack hitch, I guess I guess this is a standard three bet, but I, I guess my situation is kind of weird because we are getting pretty good odds to call. We have to call eighteen hundred to try to win about fifteen thousand total, and that's pretty decent implied odds. However, against someone that's probably competent, I think this is just a pretty easy fold. So I really dislike the way I've played this hand, both pre-flop and again here with the call pre-flop. So this is a mistake in my eyes, looking at my hand now. And in today's game, I would probably just fold this. However, here, my opponent goes all in. And seeing this makes me think my opponent is probably not that good of a player. Because this bet size with any range doesn't really make too much sense. I guess unless he has maybe a draw and is trying to get me off a jack or something like that. I mean, obviously with jack-7, we're going to call it off. The question becomes now, if I have something like jack-10, would I call it off? And... I don't really know. I think it's a close spot, depending on what you think about your opponent's range. Perhaps I had seen this player uh, spaz around a little bit in such a manner. And if that's the case, if I know this guy either goes all in or, full, or like bets tiny and then gives up on every flop, because I've been paying attention to him, I actually do not mind this call of the 3-bet, because I can expect this guy to go nuts. And then you know I can possibly easily call off with just a jack or one pair post-flop. However, I'm not too sure that's what this guy's doing. You'll see a lot of players that are mediocre make this bet with something like ace-king or king-queen, or maybe like ace-jack, just because they want to get money in the pot and they don't really know what else to do. Um, but, but this is a tough spot when you're trying to define your opponent's range. Obviously, with jack-7, I'm just going to snap a call, but you should always think about what you do with every other piece of your range, and this is a tough spot. But if we go back to preflop, I think this is my biggest error, is calling the three bet, because... Whenever you're calling with suited connectors, you need to be getting around like 20 to 1 implied odds. And here we're getting about 9 to 1 or 8 to 1 implied odds. So we're getting nowhere near the implied odds we need to call. Um, if he had 30,000 chips behind, I think the call would be fine. But he only has uh, 15 total. So this is just not a good spot. Anyways, so we snap call it off. And interestingly enough, he has aces. And... I mean, I can't for the life of me figure out why anyone would play aces like this. You would think that on the flop you'd want to make just a standard continuation bet to induce action from your opponent, because if I don't have two pair here and he shoves, I'm probably just going to fold. If I had something like Jack-10 and he made a regular bet of like 3,000 chips, I would probably go all in every time. Um, if I had a king and he made a standard bet, I would definitely go all in. If I had a king here like king-queen or ace-king, I guess I would just call it off. So perhaps he would get value for me if I had a king, but this is one of these spots where when he jams, he's really only, only going to get a lot of action if I have... Two pair, which again, two pair is kind of tough for me to have. It's pretty tough for me to have jack seven here. Um, if I have a flush draw or a straight draw, I'm just going to call off getting great. I mean, if, if I have a flush draw, I'm going to call off getting great odds. With a straight draw like queen ten, I guess I'm going to fold. Ace queen, I'm going to fold. Any jack, I'm going to fold. Any other pair besides a set, I'm going to fold. So this is a spot where it's all in doesn't make much sense because I'm going to be folding the vast majority of my range. And anytime you have aces, you don't want your opponents to fold. And, you know, you may be thinking, well, you need to go all in to protect your hand so that your opponent doesn't outdraw you. But it's pretty tough for me to have exactly a straight flush draw here or something like that that has enough equity to really pound away. You know, you're much happier just getting all in with aces and you're making a bet, having me shove, and then call off with aces. You're going to find that you're ahead the vast majority of the time. So I definitely hate my opponent's play here. I think I, he's only going to get called whenever he's in, or most of the time going to get called when he's in pretty bad shape. And that's exactly what happens here. But um, he gets an ace, so he wins. So that's that. If you guys have any questions or comments about this episode, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.